لبيك اللهم لبي لبيك لا شريك لك لبي إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا as you've just seen, we have a very special show for you this evening, focusing in on the Islamic religion. Hi, I'm Joan Hawkins, and welcome to Grand Central. It's Wednesday, May the 23rd, 2007. We live in a world torn by war, hunger, famine, and other natural disasters. Every evening, the carnage is brought into our living rooms by various news reporters. We see the destruction. We feel the pain. But once the channel changes, those harsh images are erased from our minds by our favorite TV show. We may talk about the war in Afghanistan, we may talk about the violence in Darfur, but we truly don't understand the situations. We don't know the hopes, the dreams, and the beliefs of other cultures. In the Islamic religion, the Holy Quran is as sacred as the Christian Bible. Today's show is dedicated to a family who I consider friends. The residents of central Newfoundland pride themselves in trying to understand and respect the cultures and religious beliefs of others. We know that if we make a genuine effort to understand, peace can truly reign. Because of the conflict in the Middle East, we tend to view Muslims in a negative way. We think of suicide bombers, Osama bin Laden, and other radicals trying to spread terror throughout our world. But the Islamic religion is one of peace. Mecca in Saudi Arabia is the heart of Islam, where fighting and anger is non-existent. Please stay with us. We'll be back with the family of the Budans here in Grand Falls, Windsor. In the Islamic religion, a Muslim is expected to perform the pilgrimage to Mecca, Saudi Arabia, at least once in their lifetime, if the economic and political conditions are favorable. Recently, Mohammed Boudin and his family made that pilgrimage to Mecca, and I'm very proud to have them with me in the studio today, Mohammed and Yasmin Buddha from Grand Falls, Windsor. Welcome to Grand Central. Thank, Thank you. you. It's very nice to have you here today. I really appreciate you coming in, and uh, we're very excited about uh, sharing some ideas today. Now, you, uh, Mohammed, had uh, planned this trip a few, a while back. Tell us exactly how long ago when you started to, to make some uh, arrangements for a trip like this. We've always uh, uh, felt that we should go to Mecca uh, for many, many years because this is one of the commandments of God in the Holy Quran that we have to go to Mecca as you just mentioned. But this has it started to crystallize in the uh, last couple of years when, as you mentioned, economic and political uh, situation got better. So, but in the last one year we have uh, been preparing more and uh, the children were growing and we felt that it would be easier to make uh, the, the travel with them. So essentially in the last one year we have been uh, preparing more for the travel. And there's a lot of details to work out when you're making a trip like this. Indeed, indeed. Now, Yasmin, when uh, you and your husband decided that you were going to go and take your family, what, what kind of thoughts came to your mind about going so far away and, and having the responsibility of the children with you? Um, actually, we were thinking of leaving the kids behind, but uh, we decided that that would be, uh, you know, more uh, uh, difficult because uh, we never left them alone. Mm. So uh, we had peace of mind that the, we are all together, going together, as a family and uh, I, I, our only concern was that if the children get sick mm -hmm. and uh, so because there will be people from all over the world so that was the only you know concern so that they don't get sick and so. now I know uh, there was three million people yes down to uh, Mecca Saudi Arabia for this particular pilgrimage and uh, I know you must have thought too about the safety of the children yes. and uh, did you ever fear that you might get separated from, from them? Yes, actually, I know uh, you, you know did the something to travel, that. Yes, the travel agent uh, given us a card, each one with the name tag and uh, the place where we were staying. So we told the kids that if ever, you know, we lose them, they should, you know, show the card. And uh, for the boys, we had, you know, uh, the uh, the leash, you know, had mm -hmm. wrist arm, uh, and uh, this is how, you know, we, uh, we had to, you know, be together. 
in a, especially in a, in the mosque when we were doing the circuits of the Kaaba mm -hmm. and uh, the streets would be very full in Mecca but it was uh, very quiet in Medina. Now, uh, Mohammed, you had a, being the husband, the father, you had the responsibility of five people with you and uh, were you ever concerned about the uh, security and, and different things like that before you actually took the trip? Absolutely, and uh, you have to do a lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, I always say the kids, uh, they are like ambassadors uh, when they travel with their dad because they have absolutely no worry. They just have to board the plane and get out of the plane and ask for food. But all the responsibility is on my shoulders. So it, uh, I was uh, very worried and I kept on thinking for a month ahead uh, how can I, uh, what should I do and uh, to make things work good for all of us. And uh, fortunately it worked well. I had to have my eyes always open mm -hmm. uh, every now and then because as you mentioned there were three million people and if you get lost it's a big problem. One of the things uh, as she mentioned was everybody had a name tag with the hotel and address uh, but fortunately everything went well and uh, uh, our fears uh, didn't come true. No. Right? Now the um, beliefs of the Islamic religion, tell us exactly what you believe in. Uh, the, the, the main belief of Islam is based on five pillars of Islam, as we say. Mm -hmm. so there are many details, but uh, when I say that this is the belief, uh, the basic belief of Muslims, it means that all Muslims of the world, irrespective of uh, their sex, mm -hmm. would have these same five uh, concepts. The first one is that every Muslim believe that God is one mm -hmm. and that Muhammad is his messenger. Mm -hmm. This is called the first pillar of Islam. The second pillar of Islam is every Muslim has to pray five times a day. We can later on go into the details of the timings, but this is the uh, second pillar of Islam. The third pillar of Islam is every Muslim should fast for one month during the holy month of Ramadan. The fourth pillar of Islam is uh, every Muslim should pay the alms. This is uh, money that has been kept in the bank for one year that we have not used. We have to pay a tax on that, two and a, two and a half percent. And this goes for the poor and the needy. Is that right? uh, this is despite paying our regular taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we always like to pay uh, the alms because it's a pillar of Islam. Mm -hmm. And the fifth pillar of Islam, uh, that's why we are here today, is the pilgrimage to Mecca uh, with the two preconditions that one can afford it and the passage is safe. Now, I know the uh, two of the pillars you just mentioned was fasting and, and Ramadan and prayer. Um, Yasmin, I know that uh, you pray five times a day. There's not yes. a day set aside for a Sabbath as such, but you do pray five times yes. a day. Tell us how that happens in your home. Yes, uh, for you know, morning prayers, we wake up at, uh, let's say, pre-dawn prayer. We wake up around 4 a.m. So since the children know from before, so we just have to, you know, uh, call them and they just wake up and... Uh, they do ablution before prayer. We have to wash our hands three times and uh, rinse our mouth and your face and so on. And uh, then we do the congregational prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, when we finish with the prayers, they just go back to bed. So this is something uh, that uh, is, has become very normal since we have been doing that, you know. So, uh, and then we go back to, to sleep. So. It, so, it's amazing when I spoke with the children on Monday, uh, the fact that uh, your husband had mentioned that there's no uh, shaking the children to get them out no. of bed. Uh, yeah. They're used to that. They're, it's a good discipline and, yes. uh, and they do get out at 4 a.m. and, and yes. partake in their prayers and it happens five times a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I admire, I admire <laughs> the dedication of, of your children, your, your family and your faith. Now, uh, Mohammed. If I just may jump in here, you, you yes. ask about the five. Uh, yes, prayers. I just. She just uh, mentioned the first one. If she wants to continue on that. Okay, you can. Yes. Then we have the noon prayer. 
uh, and uh, that follows by followed by afternoon prayers mm -hmm. and uh, sunset prayer at sunset and evening prayer. Okay. So we, I mean, we have to you know uh, do all the prayers mm -hmm. as well and. And, and so it it's keeps formalized a, prayers as prayers that have been set for for yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Now, uh, Muhammad, the uh, the Holy Quran is your Bible. You believe in one God, but your belief in the Day of Judgment uh, is the most emphasized doctrine in the Quran. Why is that? Well, it is. Uh, I'm not sure about whether it is most emphasized. The most emphasized, I think, is. Uh, the unity of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, but then there is a set of beliefs. We have to believe in God. We have to believe in all the prophets mm -hmm. of God. And when I say all the prophets of God, you see only 25 names are mentioned in the Holy Quran. But then we believe in all the prophets that are mentioned in the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, from Adam to Noah to Idris to uh, Abraham, Moses, mm -hmm. David, Solomon, and all these prophets. We revered them and we believe in them. So we have to believe in God, we have to believe in all the prophets, we have to believe in all the angels, we have to believe in all the revealed books, and that would include the Holy Quran, the Gospels, the Torah, the Psalms of David, and whatever other revealed book there may have been, we, we have to abide to that set principles. Then we believe in the angels, mm -hmm. and then we believe in the Day of Judgment. So these are all uh, very important uh, belief concepts that uh, we have to believe. But uh, since you mentioned about uh, belief in the Day of Judgment, uh, I think uh, because I meet many people and discuss with many uh, friends of different faith, uh, it's common in other faiths also. But uh, the concept of accountability is very important mm -hmm. because this is what uh, uh, generates that desire to do good even when nobody is watching. And because we know there will be a reward for all, every act of goodness. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this uh, Judgment Day is uh, there for us to lead such a life that every action is done in a way that is uh, pleasurable to God. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I just may throw that in, you see the whole uh, Islamic uh, belief is based, it can be summarized in this simple concept that we have to pay God's his due rights and we ha have to pay all the creatures of God their due rights. So all the creatures of God, whether humans or animals, we have to deal with them compassionately, kindly, because this is also a type of worship for us. Mm -hmm. Now I know, uh, Mohammed, that uh, the focal point of the pilgrimage to Mecca, Saudi Arabia, uh, is the Kaaba. And, uh, that is said to be rebuilt by the prophet Abraham. And what is the, what is the Kaaba and what is the significance, significance of it? As you mentioned, the Kaaba is the focal point of the Hajj. The Kaaba, according to the Muslim belief, is the first house ever built in the world for the worship of one God. Mm -hmm. And so we believe that most likely Adam built the Kaaba for the worship of God. Uh, but over time, uh, you know, uh, people, they deviate from uh, that concept of the unity of God. And uh, time and again, prophets have come. That's why the Holy Quran mentioned that Abraham, which was the patriarch Abraham, he and his son, they rebuilt the Kaaba. Mm. And they established the pilgrimage since then. And uh, of course, over time, uh, the Kaaba became full of idols. And at the time of Muhammad, there were 365 idols within the Kaaba. And every day, people, uh, you know, worship one idol. Mm -hmm. So when uh, Muhammad, came, well, Muhammad, peace be upon him, came, he restored that Kaaba as Abraham mm -hmm. intended. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when we go to uh, Mecca, of course, we don't pray the Kaaba. It's not like a stone that we worship, no. but it's only, it reminds us of the sacrifice of Abraham and his family, and uh, it reminds us of the unity of God. So, uh, and all Muslims all over the world, wherever they are, they face the Kaaba when they pray. 
So that's why in the pictures of the Kaaba that you've seen, you see they are in a circle. Mm -hmm. But if you go in any mosque, people are praying in a straight line. Oh, okay. But uh, the idea is everybody is facing, facing. towards the Kaaba. Mm -hmm. uh, in that uh, concept of, of unity, uh, because we want to unify mankind mm -hmm. as, one, mm -hmm. as one people. Mm -hmm. Now, I said a little earlier that I had the pleasure of speaking with your children on Monday, and right now we're going to see that interview with uh, Aisha. Perfect. Aisha, you had the most awesome privilege to go to uh, a pilgrimage to Mecca approximately six months ago. How was that for you? It was really exciting. We had always seen it on um, Muslim TV. I had always seen the Kaaba. I had always prayed towards it, so when we were about to go. I was really looking forward to it. Was it everything you thought it would be or more? It was a journey of a lifetime. Um, when we arrived there and we entered the masjid, mosque, and um, I seen the Kaaba, I went speechless. It was, it looked beautiful. It's something you won't soon forget, for sure. And I uh, understand the, uh, what you're wearing today is what you purchased in Saudi Arabia. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, it's called abaya. It's an outer garment, and um, everyone was wearing the abaya there. We went to the shops, and there was a variety of abayas, and I purchased four all together in my trip. That's wonderful, and you look beautiful in it. Now, you're 19 years of age, and you go to the College of the North Atlantic here. What did your friends have to say when you got back? When I came back, I had my head covered, and no one said anything at first, but after some time, after my classes, some girls came up to me, you never covered your head before, and now you are covering. Why is that? And I had some other questions like, will you be covering your head tomorrow? Or do you feel really hot um, having with your head cover? And I told them, you know, um, yes, I never used to wear before. But ever since I went to Saudi Arabia, I was in a Muslim country. Everyone was wearing. And so when I came back, I thought to myself that I... I shouldn't be complex. I should be w covering my head. And I had bought many, many scars. So it wasn't hard to cover. That was Aisha. We're going to be back with the Budins in just a moment. See Trout River, Indian Harbor on the way. Hey, St. Mary's favorite brand in the land, of course, Central Dairy. Central Dairies is a proud sponsor of Grand Central. I'm not exactly NHL material, but I'm a good hockey player. And I always hoped if I ever had a son to teach him to play, you know, to keep their tradition alive. But now I just hope they're able to keep me alive. Welcome back. I'm here today with Yasmin and Mohammed Boudin from Grand Falls, Windsor. Mohammed, take us through to the, the trip at Mecca. Well, we reach uh, Mecca on the uh, 16th or 17th of December. We started from, uh, from Grand Falls on the 13th of December. Then we flew to Toronto. When we reach finally Mecca here, what we see on the screen is Mina Camp. This is where we stay during the uh, pilgrimage. And this is Yasmin's aunt. Who she, where did she come from? Uh, from Washington, D.C. Oh, okay. yeah. And this is uh, the location, the place where the Prophet uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born in, in Mecca. This is the place where he passed away, and the Green Dome is where his grave uh, rests at this time. This is on the road towards the big mosque in Mecca. Mm -hmm. People going for the prayer. And this is Yasmin Asfa. And uh, this is Yasmin in the precinct of the Kaaba. This is the big mosque in Mecca, the outside part of the mosque. So the Kaaba is inside there? The Kaaba yes. is inside the, okay. big, the big mosque. The, and this is a big mosque. It's also called Masjid al-Haram. Uh, and these are people outside. 
uh, sitting outside because there was no place inside, mm -hmm. it was full. Quite a large area there. A very large area. This is Mount Arafat. Uh, this is where the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him, he had his farewell sermon. And this is Jabal Nur, this is uh, where Cave Hira is. This is where the first revelation came to the Prophet. This one is Cave Saur, this is where the Prophet and the first Caliph, they had to uh, you know, be before they migrate to Medina. Mm -hmm. This is the mosque in Medina. Uh, it's a very big compound also. This is the outside part of the compound. Yes, me. And uh, this is... Uh, this is in yes. Medina. That's the Medina, prophet, beautiful blue prophet sky prophet there, uh, yeah. Yasmin. Yeah. You did some shopping there too, didn't you? Yes. And we'll find a, a little bit more about that. Uh, the weather was cool and... Uh, and it was their winter long. there too, wasn't it? Yes. But yes. But it was very hot. This is a this picture is, by night. Uh, eh? In oh, Medina. Okay. Mohammed, there's some beautiful shots there and I understand you and your daughter had taken some of those pictures. Well, I had a chance to speak with uh, Hasfa and uh, asked her what her thoughts were on the pilgrimage. They're always, you know, I can't wait to go. I'm so excited. And we were planning this for one year. But, you know, as the days come closer from when we were actually supposed to go, of course, you know, excitement grows more. I saw some of the pictures, uh, Asfa, and it's amazing the millions of people that were there. How did you feel about such a crowd? Um, when I first reached there, there was so much people there, but it was a good environment because, you know, you're all there to do one thing, you know, and you meet so many people. Like, over there, you, met, you meet people from all over the world. I made so many friends there, so it was a great experience. Do you think that you'll probably continue making contact with some of those people? Yeah, I plan to, and I still do, so it's all good. Now, anything special stand out in your mind uh, for this trip? I know there must be many things, but any one particular thing stand out? Well, it's just a unification of all the Muslims all around the world. You know, when you enter there, you know all the people there are Muslim. And the brotherhood you see there and the friendliness, you know, it's amazing. That was Asfa, and now we're going to hear from the two sons, Arsalan and Rizwan. It was really fun because we met all new people and there were so many people when we were going around the Kaaba seven times and it, it was so tiring when we were finished when we came back home because we were we went everywhere like to Medina, Mina, Mustalifa, Arafat and it was so hot there. I, un I noticed that you're holding the Kaaba now you walked around that, you and your family, about seven times. What was that experience like for you? It was really tiring and all, but uh, I took a lot of breaks because, uh, like, it, there's so much people there pushing me, like, holding on to my head and everything. Now, I know there was uh, about three million people there, and I know there was a lot of pushing and everything. Were you at any time scared? Well, yeah, a bit. Um, once some guy just holding my head and dug your nails right into it. So I guess your mom and dad were very close by, though. Would you, uh, was it everything that you thought it was going to be? Did you really like the trip? Yeah, it was fun. But uh, after we got back to Grand Falls, like, um, I was so tired and everything. That was Arsalan and Rizwan. Mohammed, um, I know you are very proud of your Canadian citizenship. And tell us what message you'd like to leave our viewers tonight. So my message to, to the people of New Finland would be a love for all, hatred for none. And uh, my wish is, may Canada become the world and may the world become Canada. Thank you. Because there was a one point when uh, you had three passports and all your family now is Canadian. Uh, indeed. Thank you so much for coming in today. Well, as we leave you tonight, you're going to be seeing some shots of Mount Show in uh, Mecca. Have a great evening, and we'll see you tomorrow night here on Grand Central. <laughs> Allahumma, Allahumma, Labbaik, Labbaik, Allahumma, Ya Rabbi Al-Umam, Labbaik, Allahumma.
اللهم قلا فنا ثوب الندى لبيك اللهم يا رب الأمم لبيك اللهم قلا فنا ثوب الندى بالدمع قد فاض الحرم نشكو الخطايا واللمن بالدمع قد فاض الحرم نشكو الخطايا واللمن لا يشتكى إلا إليك لا يشتكى إلا إليك لبيك الله